A major new advance in the non-invasive treatment of kidney stones is detailed in a recently published paper by research teams at the University of Washington in Seattle and Moscow State University. Isolated and separated by the coronavirus pandemic, team members came together via Zoom to talk about the latest findings reported in the paper. We have a, a large team that's been working specifically on kidney stones for quite some time. The team has shown experimentally and in human clinical trials how an ultrasound system can erode and break stones in the kidney. And then, with the same system, use the acoustic radiation force to push fragments and stones out of the kidney. Hey! We have a kind of all-in-one tool to break and move fragments out of the kidney, but, but that's just like a leaf blower. It just blows the, the stones away. Now carefully targeted sound waves encircle the stone with a vortex of high pressure. If that vortex is moved and steered electronically, the stone moves with it. An evolution from leaf blower to ultrasonic tweezer. Going from being able to manipulate it in one dimension to three dimensions gives you um, far more control in, for certain applications. The path out of the kidney and into the bladder is a long, curving, tortuous path. So this would give the capability to pick up and move those stones in a controlled fashion. And we can see that path from the ultrasound image. If you want to grab the stone, you should know if you have enough force to grab the stone and to move it and to levitate. So after understanding the forces and getting uh, comparing it to the theoretical model that's was developed also in in house by uh, Oleg and Mike. Um, we uh, just compared the theory to our experimental measurements, and then it was the step to start actually do the three D levitation. So the very first levitation work started toward the beginning of twenty eighteen, where we started levitating in water on a very thin membrane, rest the sphere on, and levitate the sphere and move it around. Mohammed Gannon began work on this project as a UW graduate student and is now a postdoctoral fellow at APL UW Center for Industrial and Medical Ultrasound. When we first met, we were talking about um, characterizing the array. One of the key components of this technology is the multi-element therapeutic array itself. Uh, designing such an array that can generate specific beam shapes, then electronically translate these beam shapes along a predefined path. We discussed the holography technique to um, and localize the power and the acoustic output for every element on the array to create different beam shapes. The biggest milestone was the ability to be able to actually move it in, in three dimension in a living body that's breathing. In our in vivo tests, we were able to lift an implanted bead in the living body and move it in prescribed patterns within the body without any injury to the tissues. The way we did this, we used a very wide beam that would squeeze onto the sphere to grab it and center it. And then we can execute the motion, which is completely automated. The actual challenge was trying to align the sphere along the acoustic focus. One of the key uh, next developments needs to be some better methods of you know localizing the bead and even determining where the beam is exactly and how how ideal it is compared to what we see on the image what i like in this project it's one of the beautiful examples when the knowledge of the foundations of the wave physics helps us to build some new new design and a new application It is quite a leap to be thinking about a beam that picks up and moves a solid object that we can see. 